for Javier. Hello, my name is Javier Sanz Cruzado, and I'm going to show you the work I have developed along Pablo Castells at the Universidad Autónoma de Madrid, in which we focus on contract recommendation in social networks. Uh, we all know uh, Facebook, Twitter has some mechanisms to uh, recommend users to you in order to befriend them or follow them. Uh, in order to motivate our work, I will ask you a question. What is the goal of a contract recommendation? If we ask a system, a system administrator, one possible answer could be the following. To transfer offline friendships to the online network as soon as possible in order to uh, increase the engagement of the users. However, is that is just, just it or there is something else? In social networks, users are not isolated. They are constantly exchanging information among them, interacting to each other, etc. So each time a user, a link is created between users, it does not, it does not only affect the users involved in the link, but also the local environment and even further. So, as contact recommendation is one of the main tools for uh, creating links in social networks, it has a strong, uh, it, it is a strong factor on how the network and their properties evolve. So, beyond the first goal, contrary to it, that it just focuses on the accuracy, on how the density of the network is increased, uh, we just want to focus in, on additional goals uh, which could drive to a beneficial property for all the users in the network. For example, uh, using contract recommendation to reduce filter bubbles. Our work has two different goals. First, to define some suitable metrics that target global benefits for all the users in the network, and then define uh, um, determine what meaning, do, what real meaning do those metrics have in terms of uh, network functionality. In order to determine, uh, to define those metrics, we wanted to know what effect does um, contra do contract combination algorithms have on the structure of the network. Specifically, uh, we targeted the diversity uh, concept in social network analysis, the so-called structural diversity. A structural diversity has been uh, related to the concept of weak ties, to how non-redundant non weak uh, links are in the network. Since weak ties have been uh, traditionally related to uh, information novelty and an enrichment in the information flow, it seems like a promising starting point uh, to, to consider. But how are we going to measure uh, metrics that reward that structural diversity? Well, first we take the uh, social network and generate recommendations for each user in the network. Then from that recommendation, we, we take the top K recommended links and add them to the network. We repeat this for all the users in the network and obtain an enhanced graph which we could use to measure the structural diversity metrics and analyze the corresponding effect. But what are we going to measure? Well, first we could address uh, the redundancy of the edges by analyzing their uh, local environment. For example, if we take a path of length two, we consider them redundant if there is a link from the origin to the, uh, to the end. So a metric we, we could use related to the so-called clustering coefficient is to measure how, uh, what proportion of these triads are open, are non-redundant. If we look uh, to the whole network to determine what, me, uh, what links are weak, uh, we could uh, observe the uh, graph partitioning in communities, which are tightly connected uh, groups of links. In that, in that sense, uh, weak links would represent links between communities. And then a 
simple metric which we could measure is just the number of links between communities, which is related to the so-called modularity. But in that case, we could also have something like the picture in the left, which all links come between uh, two, only two communities. We found that it would be more interesting to have the links better distributed among the different communities, something like we show on the, red, on the right picture. In order to analyze how balanced is the distribution of edges between communities, we proposed a new metric, which we call community edge genie complement, which just targets that. When we have defined these metrics, we could show some results, analyze them, but uh, we will skip this part because we don't, we don't, we don't know already, we do not uh, already know what these metrics might mean. So we will uh, test what meaning do they have. In order to do that, we analyze the potential effect these metrics have on reducing the uh, filter bubbles. Filter bubbles are usually related to a lack of the diversity of the information that reaches the users. So we wanted to know if enhancing these structural diversity metrics could lead to an increase on the information diversity that traverses the network. For that, we conducted an experiment over Twitter data in which we start with a baseline recommendation and then over that, we, will, we apply some greedy rankers that optimize that structural diversity metrics. Similar to, how we, uh, to what we explained before, we generate the expanded graph with the top care recommendations, and we run the propagation of real downloaded tweets through the network, uh, in which every user propagates the uh, tweets to all their followers, and they only retweet some of them if they had done it in real life. Over that, uh, Simulation, we, will miss, we would measure uh, information diversity. How could we measure information diversity? Well, uh, as we use Twitter data, we found a natural way to do it by measuring it in terms of hashtags, which could represent uh, the topic of the tweets. And uh, we uh, created this metric we show on the screen with just um, measures how evenly hashtags are propagated over the population. On this slide, we show the results of our, um, of our research in terms of diversity. In, on the screen, we show on the x-axis the accuracy of the recommendation in terms of precision, and the diversity, information diversity metrics on the y-axis. Uh, for each metric, we generated several um, re-rankers, uh, re-ranked rankings, which uh, give more or less importance to the precision and the structural diversity metric. Lambda equals to zero, to zero represents the baseline, and lambda equals to one represents the fully re-ranked, uh, <coughs> the fully ranker which uh, enhances the most the corresponding uh, structural diversity metric. As we see, all of the uh, structural diversity metrics promote uh, the, the information diversity that reaches the users, especially the um, metric which we define that but, uh, shows how balanced is the distribution of edges between pairs of communities. To sum up, in our work, we have proposed several uh, Evaluation, perspective, uh, evaluation perspectives in terms of structural diversity uh, on, um, on weak ties, in which we measure uh, global networks effect beyond the, uh, beyond the accuracy of the recommendations. As we saw, recommending, recommending weak ties has some uh, beneficial effects on how the, inform the information uh, flow uh, that has some uh, benefits on the information flow that traverses the network. For future work, we would like to study further metrics such as like uh, uh, distance-based metrics, classical knowledge and diversity, 
and try our experiments on other data such uh, as networks from Facebook or Instagram. In our paper, we have more uh, data sets, metrics, so I encourage you to read it and more. Come see me at the poster session in order to uh, discuss them. And thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, all right. Um, anyone who has any questions about this? Any questions? I, I have a question myself, so uh, okay, I, I can ask it. Um, so you showed the. Um, um, I, I, you, sh you showed that um, random and popularity actually did really well in, in kind of creating diversity to a certain extent, right? It's mm -hmm. not, not a very good algorithm, but, uh, and then you showed that yeah. you could do greedy re-ranking of like better algorithms to provide similar levels of, of uh, the structural diversity. Mm -hmm. Is there a, was, did you find a solution that um, because if you do the re-ranking, you give up some of the quality of the recommendations. Yeah. Did you find a solution that was kind of Pareto better than the, than the um, uh, random or popularity version? So one that still had a decent uh, accuracy, but also a higher structural diversity. Hmm. Well, uh, random pop we found random popular a random recommendation to provide uh, a good. Um, a good diversity, mm -hmm. it's practically, uh, it's, it's, it's reasonable because random recommendation at, uh, almost promotes every, every diversity metric. But um, it's hard to beat. Uh, we, ha we would like to find, it would be really interesting to find some algorithm that had a, real, a really good accuracy and really good structural diversity, but we, I guess we haven't found it yet. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, other questions? I, I had one other question that, that kind of relates to that a little bit, which is, um, I would imagine if, if you give people completely random recommendations, one of the downsides is that they'll be like, where the heck does this come from, right? Yeah. So, so one of the questions that I would have is, how, how do you think that, um, these algorithms would have an effect on on kind of on the users, and uh, how would you prevent something like that from happening? Like, would you do that through explanation, or, or what would be your your solution to that? Well, um, if you, uh, if you used some, uh, I, I guess the the best option would be to use some enhanced algorithm some. Uh, so no, some algorithm from the state of the art, for example, uh, for example, let's suppose that you, we use one of the most uh, well-known, most common neighbors. Most common neighbors would provide a good explanation on what, um, on how com a recommendation is provided. If we re uh, if we enhance the structural diversity on that m on that algorithm, we could have somehow explainable recommendations which. We People could see. I see what why they are recommending me this, mm -hmm. and then drive the evolution of the network to a desirable property. So I think expl explaining the recommend explaining why they are recommending might uh, help. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's thank the speaker. Oh, one more. Yeah, of course, no problem. Sure, make it short. <laughs> Sorry, Nava. So, really great fundamental work. Thank you for a nice talk. Um, I think structural diversity is a very interesting thing to look at here. The question is how one might want to define structural diversity, um, and in, in particular, how one constructs the graph is likely to change uh, the performance of diversity that we see. Have you thought about alternatives, or is that something that you're maybe wanting to look at in future work? Sorry, could you ha speak a little higher? So sure. I, 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 I am here, sorry. Is, so I was proposing of looking at different ways of constructing the graph, effectively, uh, and through that, finding perhaps different performances in terms of diversity. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in, about, in our experiments, we just uh, focused on one way to construct our training graphs and so. 
Uh, and maybe uh, results might change on how their training, the training, the setting is built. We would like, we would also like to address that. Uh, well, well um, uh, well. Uh, so j just to be concrete here, right? So if you think about uh, hashtags, you're easily getting topical diversity. Yeah. But you're not going to get diversity in viewpoint. So if you think if you build on an opinion mining approach and based a graph on that, mm -hmm. uh, the level of diversity might be fundamentally. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I different. understand. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, we used hashtags because this was the easiest way to take. But um, I would find that if the, the information diversity is increased, it would lead to receiving st a, a different opinions from different sources. So I think it, it, might, be cons it might be consistent. Uh, if you receive the, uh, information from one community, from, di from different communities, uh, let's for, ex for example, in uh, in terms of a, a product. It is likely that you would receive not only positive, uh, positive opinions on that product, but also uh, more varied. So uh, I think they would be, it would be interesting to test this, uh, this in terms of data opinions or, uh, for example, uh, it comes to my mind, uh, Pol uh, po uh, politics, different uh, uh, parties. Um, it, uh, it could be an interesting topic, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's uh, thank the speaker again.